we're the only species on the planet that needs a food guide to tell us what to eat, right? Like we know what's good for us. And so like chips taste great, not good for you. Ice cream. I love ice cream. Not good for you. It's a treat. It's not an everyday thing, right? Um, so the foundation for all of us is straightforward. Like it's, the reason why I'm associated with Muse is because universal human truth. We've been doing and been training as humans on meditation for at least 5,000 years. Like this has been well established as something that's good for us. So we can go down that road. So um, I, I like to keep it simple, but at the same time, I'm curious. I'm super curious. I love exploring how I can use wearable technology to track my sleep so that when I make changes, I can see how I am doing. I'm fascinated by exploring heart rate variability as a way for me to track and measure my stress levels. So if I um, maybe do some meditation, I can see is my nervous system calming down. So I love using tech to inform me, but at the same time, I always hedge my learning against the trusted web of people that I know and appreciate. And I believe that their information is correct uh, into keeping my decisions really, really simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. And I think this might be connected a bit, but this was probably the number two most popular question or maybe topic to talk about. But based on your research, what role does stress play in how does it affect our mitochondria and, and our energy? I'm fascinated by the idea of hormesis. So hormesis is a technical term about stress that basically says that a little bit of stress is good for you and a lot of stress is not. So let's look at that. Let's say that we have psychological stress and there's a bout of you're faced with a challenge and it's really stressful and gets your adrenaline going and your cortisol is pumping and you work throughout the course of the day and you get the job done, you deliver the project. Then you go home at night and you have an amazing dinner with your family. Maybe you do a little bit of meditation, watch a movie, get a great night's sleep. If we alternate stress plus rest, that gives the body the time to shift its energy allocation to recovery, regeneration, and repair. The cool thing is, is that if there's that stress plus rest, then you actually adapt and get stronger because the body knows that it might get stressed again in the future and it will rebuild itself just slightly stronger than it was before. Think about going out and lifting weights. If you go lift weights, you're sore. You've broken down your muscle tissues. You've stressed your muscles. If you go home and get some good food and get some rest and get some sleep, you come back tomorrow, your muscles don't hurt anymore and you can lift just a little bit more. So when we are, when we do that stress plus rest, alternating back and forth, practicing hormesis, a little bit is good. A lot is not. Then we get stronger. We get fitter. We get more resilient. The problem with stress is when it's chronic, it's mm. unrelenting. It's never ending because then you never recover, you never repair, you never regenerate.